everyone, welcome back. This is Susan at Paper Craft Possibilities. Um, if you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Today we're gonna work with, again with the Evergreen Collection. We're down to the little bits and pieces. In fact, there are some pieces right there. Here's some of the pieces I'm gonna to put together today and we're gonna show a different couple of ways to dress up your papers too. And I'm gonna be recording these two pictures of myself and my two children um, when they were much, much younger, when we went up to Big Bear in California and went playing in the snow, which is a little unusual for us California kids. Kids. <laughs> Using the kids term for me too, I love it. Anyways, let's roll the intro and get started. <music> Welcome back. So what we're doing here is we are going to do some splattering on some papers. Here I have a, I believe this is evergreen, don't hold me to it. Oh no, it's a slightly patterned piece from the evergreen collection. And so is this paper. And I know I'm gonna be putting some pictures here, but I wanted to add some splattering to possibly look like snow. And I wanted to do it in a silver metallic. So I have some watercolors here by Fine Tech, they're called Pearl Colors. And I've taken out the silver palette, which is right here. And I've gone ahead and reactivated it with some water. I keep a little spray bottle of water here in the studio. And what I've done is I've taken one of my paint brushes, a fan brush would actually be better, which is kind of a spread out brush, and use it dry with no water. But this is what I have, so I'm gonna use this. And what I'm doing is I'm putting some of that over here in my paint tray, so I can show that to you. I'm putting some of that silver paint on it, and I'm just tapping this. Okay, I want more up in this corner. And let's see, we're having a hard time getting that done. Here we go. A little bit more water on the brush should do it. There we go. I'll put a link to these paints down below and it'll be under the title of the video is where you'll find it. So for right now, that's what we're gonna do and it'll dry in a metallic. You see, I'm in a splatter box. I'm just using one of my shipping boxes. You can kind of see, let's see, get this closer, the metallic shine that it'll make. Earlier I tried sponging it too, um, just for a little bit of difference there. So there's that. Okay, so my Versamat. And let me put down a little dab of some of my glue just, well, goodness deal with that later uh, just to kind of tack it down while I'm working with this I want to make sure that things are really lined up straight these versa mats are worth their weight in gold they really are okay and we're gonna make sure that this is at the nine and almost three so we've got a six inch strip of paper here. Oh goodness, look what I just did. Well, we're gonna have a new effect. <laughs> That'll be like snow being thrown, snowballs, right? They're just in fast action. <laughs> we'll see how this works. If I don't like it, I'll recreate it, but for right now, this is cut, so we'll see what we get here. Okay, so we now if we line this side up at the nine, which is right here, and we line up that side, we know we have that straight. Okay, so there's that. Then what I know I wanna do is I wanna add these zip strips, which are, some of the other companies call these branding strips. Um, when which which 
pardon me, but it's close, with close to my heart. They give you a full length. With a lot of companies, they only give you a half or a fourth. So I truly appreciate that because you can use those in your decor instead of just wasting them. Okay, so let's again use these strips on our Versamark to make this is, make sure this is straight. I'm gonna put the bottom edge of this right on the three, which will cover up the seam on this dark green paper. And the same will be true of the three on my side. So with this tape, it's slightly repositional for a few minutes, a few seconds, I guess I could say. A minute or two, let's go there. So don't smush it down until you're happy with its placement. So the next thing we have, I'm gonna start putting things in a, you know, just setting them in. And then what I do is I take a picture with my phone just to make sure that I'm happy with everything. So I know I want these two pictures here of my children and I. So I believe I'm gonna go ahead and put them in like that. I know I want some journaling, so I layered some pieces here. This is my toffee paper. And I cut a piece of white daisy paper. This was part of the sticker package that came in that packet or in the workshop. So I'm going to put that down in here and I'll put my journaling there. Let's see what else we have going over here. I've gone ahead and cut the pieces that I know I want to use or possibly use. I may not use them all. And I'm picking them up right now. Okay. There is that. I think that will make a good title. And let's see what else we have here. Uh, I've got these circles that came in, again, the workshop. I think I might like to put something under there. And then again, maybe at this other corner. I want to make sure this is twisted like the other photo. I like that. I call these some pine needles that came in there. They're laser cut, which I love because look at that detail. Isn't that incredible? I love the new laser cutting. So if I put this up here, it's going to show up on the nice, the beige background, if you will. And then this will show up here because of the dark background. I'm not sure I'm gonna use these pieces. This I thought we could use down here because this reminds me of the fences that they have down when you're skiing so you don't go <laughs> plowing into everyone. Then we've got some little tags here. Maybe here? Nope, don't like that. How about I think I do like that. Stick that up in there. Again, there's that word I use. How about if we use the word place it, not stick it? And these little snowflakes are fun right in here. Not sure I'm loving that there. Okay, we're back. It got a little bit more involved than when I went off camera last time. So I kinda wanna explain to you first what I had done here, and then I'll show you a few things. I lifted up the remember sign here on some 3D tape. I cut one of these circles, which is comes on the sticker sheet, or actually comes on the die cut sheets in the workshop. I cut that in half and put half here, half here. Then um, I lifted up this one photo of my children and I on some foam tape and I put it pretty much all over the photo so it wouldn't dent in. If you have um, fun foam, I would also use that on here. I just don't have any on hand. A couple of the die cuts I put on here. And then what I did is I took the snowflakes and the snowflakes, the big ones and the small ones, and I took some clear um, of our glitter pins, which I will connect, 
and I put down some of the pens so you have some shininess on here and then I did the same thing with these little snowballs is how I see them over here and then on these boots I put it on the furry part of the boots and on the buttons I put my journaling down here. I used some clear tape for putting down the journaling. Um, some clear like double stick tape that you can print on. I will link that down below. I get that on Amazon. And then um, this little fence here is kind of like when you go skiing, you know, the fence at the bottom so you don't go off the slopes. Um, if you've ever seen that movie, what's it called? Um, Last Holiday, I think, with, um, oh, what's her name? She's a singer and an actress. Anyways, if you haven't seen that movie, go see it. It's pretty funny. Uh, not go see it. It's on, it's on TV. It's called either Last Holiday or Holiday. I'm not sure, but I think it's Last Holiday. Then what I did is I took an old stamp set that I have that I really wanted to use. Let's see if I can show this to you. And there's just some fun stamps in here. So I took the puffy jacket and I took the boot. There's just a single boot. And what I did, I wanted to show you in case some of you have never seen it before. You always want to use, when you're coloring things, you want to use a intense black ink from, this is the one from Close to Art. Close to the heart, close to my heart. Excuse me. And what I did first is, let me see if I can get this out for you. First, stamp a boot, a single boot or whatever you're doing. And I stamped that first on whatever paper you're using. Not a very good stamp, but you'll get the idea. Then what I did is I cut that out. Let's see if you can show you. It's because I'm using it. This is called, um, oh. I'm not doing well with the words this morning, this afternoon. Um, <laughs> anyways, cut this out and hang on to this. Don't get rid of it. And a lot of people will put this on a sticky paper. Then what I did is I just lay that right over that. I held it with my fingers on this one. You again might want to stick it down with uh, some sticky tape. Then I took my other stamp and I stamped it where you want it on the paper. Like you'll see mine one sitting behind the other and put that down. And that way you can um, put two together and um, cover that up and it works out great. So that's what I did for those boots. And then I fussy cut it out. And I believe I have this down in my links below of the items that I use the most. I was never a fan of fussy cutting, which is what this is called when you're cutting around this. These scissors someone recommended to me and I can't recommend them enough. They're incredible. And remember when you're fussy cutting to always leave a little white border around it and it covers up a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so I would highly recommend those to have in your stash. They're very inexpensive too. Um, I think they're on Amazon. Again, they'll be linked below. So that is that, and I wish I could remember the term. You know, as soon as I stop taping, it'll, it'll come back to my brain. Let me wipe off my stamp real quick. By the way, if you ever get ink on your stamp pads like this, use um, some rubbing alcohol and that gets most of it off. I love it because I don't like dirty stamping box. <laughs> and again, when you use, when you make a little um, design like that for double stamping, whatever the term is, <laughs> um, put that in your stamp, you know, your little bag that you keep everything in. I have bags for my stamps that look like this. If they're not close to my heart, if they're close to my heart, they look different. Um, and I always keep those so I don't ever have to do that fussy cutting again. Then I wanted to show this to you. Let me put a piece of scrap paper. Some of you aren't familiar with these pens. I have a huge collection of Copics, but it's always a little tricky to figure out what colors go together, what don't. 
So I have grown to love these pens. They're the Tri-Blend tri pens, and they have three different colors, all that go together on one pen. And I've actually made a little cheat sheet with each of the pens I have, or there's some on the back, um, and the three colors that are in that pen. So you don't ever have to worry about what colors go with what. And of course you can mix them up too, but this just saves so much time well worth the money and they're also less expensive than the Copics. So something to think about. So I'll have this and these pens and I'll tell you about this pen in a minute. I'll have those all down below. But if you've never blended, I left part of this jacket empty so I could show you what to do. And I might speed up this portion, maybe put some music to it, but I'm using the pen called Red Brown Blend. Let me see if I can put that up there for you. That's the color I'm using on this little puffer jacket. So what you wanna do first, how I do it, is I take the lightest color and I'm gonna color this in. And um, I'll speed this up after I tell you this part. You want to take the lightest color and color in whatever you want completely. Then you're going to use the medium color, which is the one in the middle on this pen. And you're going to do little flecks on the areas where you want the shadowing. And then after that, what you'll do is you're going to do the darkest color up where the shadow is that you want. Then you will go back with the darkest color and, or excuse me, the lightest color that you started with and kind of blend it all out going down to the lightest area. So I'm gonna turn on some music and I'll... This is called, hopefully it's coming through, Vintage Blue Pen. And when you use it on the lightest color, let's see, I think this is the lightest color. It really looks gray to me. 
So I thought I'm gonna go ahead and what I outlined was everything that I wanted white because you want it to kind of stand out and have a contrast again. So I went through all the black areas that I wanted, uh, mainly in the fur here and then the fur on the boots. I outlined with this only, the lighter color. And then I went back, <laughs> mixing up pens, went back with this one, which was the clear white gel pen. It's not a gel, it's a glitter pen. Um, this one actually is called Wink Estella, but this is a really old one. I will link the current one. And then I went through on the fur and down here on the bottom and on the pen, on the pens, <laughs> on the buttons. And I did that one with the glitter pen. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop that up on the, uh, up here on the, the, my husband said it looks like, let me put this in the center. He said it looks like a palm tree. It's supposed to be pine needles. But anyways, you get the point. So I'm gonna put that up there and that means that we're done. So there's that. Again, if you got something out of this, I hope that you will consider subscribing and um, give us a like. That would mean a lot to all those guys up in the YouTube offices that decide whether they're going to show our videos or not. And until next time, thank you. Have a great day.